No. After we have learned that an altar is a portal or a gateway, whichever word you prefer to use, right? It makes more sense when we read the scripture about Jacob and how he had a dream from the Lord. And in this dream, he saw a ladder descending from heaven and landing on earth. And he saw angels of the Lord descending and ascending on the ladder. And at the top of the ladder, he was seeing, he saw the Lord and he was looking directly into the third heaven. Now, we know clearly that between the, and just to clarify, I, I say the third heaven simply because he saw the Lord at the top and the Lord is dwelling in the third heavens, right? So just, just be clear. Now, we know between the third heaven and earth, there are stars, there are galaxies, black holes, planets, and all the other things that may exist in between that space. But somehow, Jacob didn't see any of these things. But he saw directly into the third heaven. How? Because a portal was open and he was able to see directly into the heaven. So that portal connected him from earth to the heaven, to the third heaven, right? But again, yeah, we know these things now, but how does one build an altar? Because if you don't know how to build it, then this knowledge doesn't really benefit you. So this is what we want to look at in this video. But before we can establish how to build an altar for the Lord, we first have to identify the two types of altars. So you have the stationary altars and examples of this, well, most of the altars in the Old Testament were stationary altars. So they didn't move. When they were built by someone, they stayed where they are, or where, where they were. So they didn't move. And remember when Solomon built uh, the temple of the Lord, there were altars in the temple, it did not move. All the altars that Abraham built, they were stationary altars, they did not move. So most of the altars in the Old Testament were stationary. But there's another type of altar, clearly, um, you probably can guess it, and that is a portable type of altar, meaning that it can move. And an example of this in the Old Testament would have been with the tabernacle of Moses. Because when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they built a tabernacle for the Lord. And in that tabernacle, it, it, it had altars. Now, whenever they were moving, they would pack up that tabernacle and they would carry it along with them. It wasn't easy moving the tabernacle, but nevertheless, it could be moved. So therefore, it is portal. So that's the portable altar in the Old Testament. Now, the portable altar... In the New Testament would be you and I simply because we are the temple of the living God and therefore the Spirit of God dwells inside of us and if we look at the Old Testament and we saw where that when the temple was built when Solomon built the temple there was an altar there for the Lord and if those things are a shadow of things to come hey we in the New Testament, we are the temple now. So therefore, inside of us, it's a fear assumption that there is an altar. Now, don't ask me how. I, I, I can't explain that. I don't know how that works. But I'm just working with the scripture, right? So let's get back to it. How does one build an altar? And again, is there even any benefit uh, for having a stationary altar in this time because I'm sure most of you listening may be thinking, hey, I think I prefer the portable altar versus the stationary altar. Who wants something that when it's just fixed in one location versus something that you can carry around? And yeah, there, let's, let's, let's dive into that a little because there are benefits for portable versus the stationary altar. And the first one is, let's look at the stationary altar. How to build that? 
when Solomon built the temple of the Lord, right? He they offered up sacrifices unto the Lord they, when they first built it. Well, they always offered up sacrifice every day. But when they first built it, they, they offered up sacrifice unto the Lord. And Solomon prayed, inviting the Lord to come and dwell in the tabernacle. Or, well, not tabernacle, in the temple, right? The physical structure. That one did not move. And the presence of the Lord came down and filled the temple. There was so many smoke they, they, they just could not um minister the priest and uh, they had to just step out of the of the, tab, of the temple right and I, I i brought this up because what we have to do to is that we have to invite the lord with our praises our worship our sacrifices specifically for his presence when we are in our local assembly or even in our homes, we want the presence of the Lord to be there. We want him to be welcome. We want him to have that doorway do doorway that he can just enter in, that gateway that he can come freely and can feel the rich presence of God. We want that. But think about this. How many times have we went on a fast and prayer and worshiping Offer up sacrifices of praise unto the Lord. Were the sacrifices and say, Lord, we want you to come and dwell in our assembly. Or we want you to come and dwell in our homes, in our schools, in our offices. How many times have we done this? And if you haven't done it much or any at all, then chances are there is no stationary altar there. And I... I or if there is a stationary altar there, it's probably not that large. So we only get a little, a little small amount of the presence of God. When we really want a rich presence of God. And that is why we have to understand these things. Because if, this, if a stationary altar is not there, chances are what is at work it is, is the portable altar. So... When we come together now um, and we, uh, in corporate worship, we are feeling our richer presence of God because we are, when you're that portable altar come together and this portable altar come together and we all come together as one and we're sending up that worship unto the Lord. We're sending up that praise unto God. It comes down much more than if we're doing it by ourselves. You feel a richer presence of God. But, and that is why um, I believe that the Bible, a part of the reason why I believe the Bible says, you know, come together, don't forsake the assembling of yourself. To, so much the more as you see the evil they're approaching because the Lord realized that, well, he knows there are benefit for us to come together and we worship the Lord. And we can magnify the Lord together. We can feel more of the presence of God. However, the problem is when there's not a stationary altar there for the presence of the Lord, you find it more difficult to enter into the presence of God. You will find that happening. So when we come together and, you know, maybe that one worship leader who would, who, who would love to, to lead in worship is not there we don't, we don't feel that presence of the god of god as much because you know that maybe uh, whoever you lead in the worship is not there or, you know as much person didn't turn up this sunday or whatever different things may be happening we don't want that we want a consistency when it comes to the presence of god and in fact we want more of it when we come this week, we want more the presence of God than which we felt last week. But think about this. I've, I've found that when I come to church on a Sunday morning and we worship and everything, when we come back in the night, we even when there's not a lot of us, I feel a richer presence of God. And the reason for that is because from the worship that was created, well, that was sent up in the morning that opened a portal and the presence of the Lord was dwelling or dwindling or 
abiding, not for a better word, in the assembly. So when we came in the Sunday night, it was a lot easier to get into his presence. We could go further. And if, but if we can create this altar, this stationary altar for our assembly, then when we come together to worship God, then we can feel more of his presence. And it's not just his presence, because if we can establish the altars for that when persons come into our assembly, they are saved, they receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking another language. They will come and they will get baptized in the name of Jesus. They, they will come and, and they will repent of their sins. Their healings will take place. Miracles will take place. If we establish the altars for these things, we can have it. We can have it. But if we don't, we may find it a little bit frustrating. <laughs> We're coming to those of the Lord with expectations. And those expectations are not met. And I just want to pause right here because when we are building altar, one of the, the pitfalls I, the Lord has revealed to me is that we tend to put a time limit on the altar. So, in other words, when an altar is created, an altar can expire depending on how you created it. For example, say a special event is coming up in your local assembly and you say, hey, we're going to go on a fast that maybe souls are saved or the presence of the Lord will be rich in that service. And you do it. And praise God, you know, this event comes around and you feel the presence of God. Souls were saved. People were baptized. People received the Holy Spirit. Healings took place. Whatever happened. However, after that event, the, the altars would, would expire simply because you gave it a specific time when the Lord was supposed to show up and operate. And after that, he will not show up because you limited that altar to a specific time. And therefore, to get the Lord now to show up um, in any other service, you have to go back and offer the same extent of sacrifices and worship to get the presence of the Lord there. If you had if we had just fasted and prayed that whenever persons come through our local assembly that souls will be saved, persons will get baptized, or healings will take place, or miracles, or whatever you desire. If you just say whenever persons come that this will always happen, then there is no time limit to that altar. That would be a stationary altar and you will always get that in your local assembly. Once you have offered up sufficient sacrifice for that which you desire, I don't know what you desire, what you seek after, but if you offer up the sacrifice, you will get it. You will get it. And so how you build an altar, how you build an altar is simply to, again, you are gonna fast, you're gonna pray, you're gonna ask specifically for that which you require and the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is because most of the time when you're building a portable altar you don't even need to say you're building an altar in fact it is automatically built if you are going to say fast for mm, healing you know you like whenever you you lay hands on person that they are healed or you know you, you want to fast and pray for more anointing you're going to fast and pray that you can get more of the presence of the Lord in your life. Automatically, once you open your mouth, and you should open your mouth, and declare that you're going to fast, <laughs> this is something the Lord, um, I, okay, I, this is something the Lord has really dealt with me. Uh, he said that, listen, if you're going on a fast, say you're going on a fast, because you going without food doesn't mean that you're fasting. You could you, we go with our food many times for whatever period of time but when we say we are going to fast the, the altar is automatically created and the sacrifice is there to be laid on that altar and we you know, receive the things that we desire from the Lord and I, I point this out also because when Solomon was building an altar 
for the, when he built an altar for the Lord in First Kings chapter three, he offered up a thousand burnt offering unto the Lord, and in that burnt offering, the angel, the Lord appeared unto him in the night in a dream and said, "Ask that which I will give to thee," and he he asked for wisdom. But I pointed this out because if Solomon had not responded and asked for that which he desired. He would not get anything. And that sacrifice that he laid, lavish sacrifice, I, I must say, would be wasted. And many times, as Christians, we go on a fast, especially if it's a regular day of fasting for the local assembly, but we don't have any purpose. Nothing was established. We, we, we don't we don't we don't say we're going on a fast, don't tell the Lord we're going on a fast, we don't establish a purpose of the fast, we don't make any requests, and we don't really get anything. And we don't want to do that. We want to get as much as we can from the Lord. So again, this is a quick recap. An altar is just a gateway or portal. Again, there is more things that may exist to an altar, but I'm just focusing on that. And in the two types of altars, stationary altars, portable altars, we can have a stationary altar for the presence of the Lord to dwell in our local assembly or in our homes or wherever we want it to be. That His presence can be there. That angel of the Lord can come and go wherever that altar is. And when it comes to the portable altar, which is inside of us, that is, we can create that. We don't just have to say, I'm creating an altar in, inside of me. You know, it, 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 if it's inside of a home, if it's a stationary altar, we can say, yes, you know, let a, a stationary altar, let an altar be created here for the Lord. You can say that, and you can offer up your sacrifices um, to the Lord so that you can get more of his presence or the altar can be become bigger or stronger you can do this thing and this is why also I, I, I must point out that's why sometimes when we invite particular ministers to come to our local assembly you may notice that hey whenever they show up miracles take place or healings take place persons get saved or something special may happen and read and truly, the reason for this is because they may have a portable altar that is working with them. And we can do this. You know, God is no respecter of person. We can create that altar for the things that we desire. And I'm telling you, if you really understand this, there's no telling where we can go, what the things that we can do for the Lord. Because the more and more I look at these things and understand it, I realize that God is there and ready, wanted to do so much for us. But the doorway is not created so you can enter in and do our, our, our answer the prayers that we have made unto him. So, I encourage you uh, to build your altars. But, again, uh, we can build an altar and there can be hindering forces that can prevent us from getting all that we desire, even though the altar has been built. And in the next video, I will leave you some more about that. Until then, God bless you. Hope this video has provided some benefit to you. If it has, just please like and share so others can also benefit from this. God bless you.